Hello and welcome back to your video coaching program. In today's lesson, we'll focus on the foundation of a good project schedule, a work breakdown structure. If you know how to quickly create a work breakdown structure, then you can create a project schedule very quickly. It's important to understand the fundamentals of a work breakdown structure. So in this session, we'll focus on having a good understanding of what the work breakdown structure is. Let's get started. Understanding the Work Breakdown Structure with Microsoft Project. Keep in mind that there's always more than one way to build a project schedule in Microsoft Project. Also keep in mind that Microsoft Project is a database. It stores information that you put inside and allows you to access that information in a variety of ways. Also keep in mind that Microsoft Project can be used to create a work breakdown structure regardless of the methodology that you're using. Where are you in the project schedule? Where is the work? How do you identify the work that needs to be done in the project schedule? First, create an outline of the project life cycle so that the proper project management controls can be put in place for managing the project scope, cost, and the schedule. How do you create the outline for the project life cycle? By listing the project life cycle phases, for example, initiation phase, planning phase, execution and control, and closeout phase. All projects have a life cycle regardless of the methodology you're using. Identify the life cycle phases first because this will allow you to add the proper project management controls. Below is an example of a project life cycle uh, with phases written in Microsoft Project. Here you see the initiation phase, planning phase, execution and control phase, and closeout phase. If you review lesson C in week three of my video coaching tutorial, you'll see how to add the project life cycle phases into your project schedule. Second, make sure that you are consistent with the naming conventions that you use. For example, if the beginning milestone reads begin and then the milestone name, then make sure that you follow the same naming conventions for all begin milestones in your schedule. In other words, all of your begin milestones should literally read begin and then the milestone name. Likewise for the end milestone. Consistency makes your schedule easier to read and report from. And here you'll see some examples of begin initiation phase, initiation phase complete, begin planning phase, planning phase complete. These are examples of using naming conventions consistently. Next, a project schedule is not a to-do list or a grocery list. There's a science to adding work into the schedule called the work breakdown structure. Learn the WBS and you'll be able to quickly create and manage your project schedules. Creating a WBS allows you to manage the activity in the project by breaking it into tasks that are properly defined. Okay, And the smaller components will be easier to identify the duration and the work as well as assign resources. Regardless of the methodology um, to create the work breakdown structure, you need to know the scope of the project. You need to know what you're going to be doing. So identify what you plan to deliver. That's the scope of the project. And then if the scope is not defined, hold off on trying to create a work breakdown structure because you'll have to go back and spend more time changing your schedule. Identify the deliverables that are in scope. Now, a milestone is a measurement of progress and a deliverable is a product or service. So keep that in mind. The deliverables are the products or services that you create. A list of deliverables would be something like design document, technical specifications, etc. Organize the work packages inside the deliverables. You'll see this in the example schedule that we'll work on. 
Subdivide work packages by project phases. For example, design phase, construction phase, or whatever your methodology contains so that you can best manage through your project lifecycle. Make sure that the project phases are clearly separated by one or more deliverables. Insert the WBS column into your project schedule. Um, you'll see an example here. After creating the WBS, you can hide the work breakdown uh, structure column, or you can keep it if it helps you see the relationships of tasks more easily. Use the project schedule to build your WBS. WBS has uh, three elements. The top node, which is the end product, the parent tasks, which are the deliverables needed to, for the above end product, and the child tasks. These are the activities needed to complete the parent tasks. And then this diagram below here, you'll see an illustration of that. The top node is the end product, a mountain bike. The parent task are the deliverables, wheel system, gearing system, frame system, seating system, brake system. And then the child task are the activities relating to those deliverables. Also, this is referred to as the decomposition level or work package. How specific and small does work need to be to still be considered a work package? The duration of deliverables depends on the size of the project and the methodology used. Be aware of the following rules. 100% rule, mutually exclusive rule, 880 rule, and in general, learn your methodology rules. Understand the 100% rule. The 100% rule is one of the most important work breakdown structure design principles guiding development and decomposition and evaluation of the WBS. The 100% rule states that the work breakdown structure includes 100% of the work defined by the project scope and captures all of the deliverables, internal, external, and interim deliverables that are to be completed, which includes your project management deliverables. Microsoft Project allows you to capture the deliverables and visibly track the percentage of work. Understand the 100% rule. The rule applies at all levels within the work breakdown structure hierarchy. The sum of the work at the child level must equal 100% of the work represented by the parent. The work breakdown structure should not include any work that falls outside of the actual scope of the project. And when you use your project schedule to develop your work breakdown structure, your schedule will help you to see if the work um, using the work column in Microsoft Project or duration using the duration column equals 100%. Mutually exclusive elements. This rule basically means that there's no overlap in the scope definition between two elements of a work breakdown structure. Overlap could result in duplicate work or miscommunication um, about responsibility or authority on the project. Overlap also causes confusion regarding the project cost accounting. If the WBS elements element names are ambiguous, you can use a work breakdown structure dictionary to help you clarify the distinctions between the work breakdown structure elements. The work breakdown structure dictionary describes each component of the work breakdown structure with milestones, deliverables, activities, scope, and sometimes dates, resources, costs, and quality. The 880 rule. With this rule, we say that no work package should be less than eight hours or greater than 80 hours. In other words, if a work package is less than eight hours, then consider adding it into another work package. Also, if a work package is greater than 80 hours, you should consider decomposing it into a smaller work package. Determine the duration of activities. There are several heuristics or rules of thumb which can be used to determine the appropriate duration of a task. The 880 rule, which means no single activity or a group of activities should be more than 80 hours of effort. No activity or series of activities should be longer than a single reporting period or 
if it makes sense rule, which allows you to apply common sense when creating the duration of a single activity or group of activities um, necessary to produce a deliverable defined by the work breakdown structure. So keep these three in mind when you're determining the duration of activities. So this is an overview. Next week we'll examine more closely the anatomy of the work breakdown structure in Microsoft Project. In the meantime, take a look at the homework below and I'll see you next week. Have an excellent day.